American Collectors Insurance provides affordable, agreed-valued coverage for collectible cars, trucks and motorcycles, antique farm tractors, and for die-cast and automobilia collections. On this Tractor Fanatic webisode, it's part two of our visit with Brandon Pfeiffer, publisher of Lawn and Garden Collector Magazine, as he shows us some of his unique, unrestored tractors. Okay, Brandon, we're, I don't know where we are. You brought us out <laughs> somewhere in <laughs> backwoods of southern Indiana somewhere to one of your farms, mm -hmm. and I noticed you've got a building here with some pretty cool stuff stashed in here. Tell me what's in here. Well, these are a lot of tractors that I have plans to restore someday, and uh, a lot of unique Time ones. Time and money oh, yeah. is all you need, right? That's all. That's <laughs> it. You can tell I'm a little bit of a pack rat here. But. I know. There, I already noticed something that says General Electric on mm -hmm. it. Let's, let's take a look at sure. what this is. Actually, General Electric decided they wanted to get into the lawn and garden equipment business back in the 70s, actually when the energy crunch was going on, and they actually made an electric rider and wow. did not go over real well and now it's becoming quite popular among <laughs> collectors. <laughs> the Electrac? Le I GE yeah. Electrac, is it, that's exactly what they so call what, it. So what, there must be a lot of batteries in here somewhere. Lots of batteries, um, carried four in the back. Wow. And then you would also have two in the front. And where is the electric motor located? There's actually several individual electric motors. There's one that powered the transmission, okay. and then you had two individual oh, ones that yeah. operated the mower deck. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, what, I mean, one of the failures of it must have been, what, you get like 12 minutes of mowing? Or? <laughs> I, I honestly don't remember how much <laughs> mowing it was. It's more than what you would think. <laughs> you know, when you're um, mowing that thick stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'd want to mow that tall stuff with it. <laughs> well, that's unbelievable that they would try that. You know, with the technology is going into cars these days and lith lithium type batteries you'd think that this may come back it might yeah and you're seeing that on ebay too actually there's mm -hmm. people starting to drive these up not only collectors but people yeah. want to use them so. yeah exactly well that that is a very interesting piece let's close her up there. sure because i noticed the one in front the john deere here is looks like some type of prototype it is um this one was actually built in 1962 this is one of the ones that the engineers put together to try to get John Deere to go into. They made two of them. And actually, when this tractor went out, it was actually uh, painted red, which you can see here. Red on a John Deere. It was done red. Actually, it was done in a simplicity orange and then in a red, but they sent it out. That way, the co competition didn't know it was a John Deere, and that John Deere was even looking at getting into this business. Wow. When you look at the parts, so everything's just a little bit different than what actually went on the production run. So where did you find something like this? Believe it or not, this was still in Horicon, Wisconsin, or right outside of Horicon, right where it was made. And it was already, according to John Deere's records, it had been scrapped. Well, kind of find out one of the engineers took it home with him and Snuck he had out. still had it. So well, um, that was a that's very, how I got it. It was so. a very smart engineer. Yeah. Because <laughs> you have a piece of history here now. Uh, especially when we looked at the 110, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, the one you have restored, because this was obviously a cousin or brother to that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is what the design of that 110 came to from. To use from, yeah. yeah. So there's a family lineage there. Mm -hmm. You have plans to do anything with this? I do. Um, I do plan to restore this one. It's actually at the plant, it was called Runt, and on the back of the tractor, you can still see where it said mm -hmm. Runt on it. And I want to um, originally do it all back to that That's original red color. When, and wow, that'll get some looks at shows, won't it? People won't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> Great. Hey, Tractor Fanatics, subscribe now to the all-new Vintage Tractor Digest that highlights all brands of vintage farm machinery and more. This upcoming magazine focuses on antique tractors powered by steam, distillate, gas, and diesel, along with horse-drawn equipment, plus special articles featuring our very own Tractor Chick. Visit VintageTractorDigest.com today to subscribe. Now, Brandon, you've got a lot of tractors in here, and I see some interesting John Deere's here that some of these were kind of failures, I understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they right. tried some things, they really didn't work. But one that caught my eye back here is this John Deere, mm -hmm. specifically because of the coloring. And this was something that John Deere tried in the early 70s, 69, 70, 71? That's correct, yes. What was the idea here? Well, the idea was they wanted to focus on getting the women more involved in making the purchase for these lawn and garden tractors. And I thought, hey, if we can make it to where they can pick different colors, then maybe we can get them to buy our tractors. So you could get it either in a uh, spruce blue, 
um, April yellow, which is this one, a sunset orange, or what they call a patio red. And basically the tractor came in white and then you just picked your hood in your seat. So they were targeting women? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And of course, being the 70s, I, uh, of course I don't see shag carpet on this No, one, no. Um, <laughs> the, now the uh, brochures look pretty far out there. <laughs> pretty racy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this really didn't work? It did not. It was a big failure. Um, just actually what most of them ended up getting painted um, green again and yellow and were sent and just back used, out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it was an experiment that John Deere did and uh, yeah, they just kind of glossed over it and now are these collectible? Very collectible. Uh, to give you an idea, this seat, um, now one is a new old stock, which there's still some out there, will bring anywhere from 1000 to 2000 just for the seat itself. Wow. And Brandon, this got to be something interesting because I see Caterpillar on it and I see John Deere on it. What, what in the world is this Frankenstein thing? <laughs> okay, well, back in the 70s, Caterpillar had looked at getting into the lawn and garden industry, just like what we talked about GE had. Mm -hmm. They built four different prototypes. I'm not sure exactly what all the models were. This was one of them. They had an idea of possibly setting a John Deere up, and basically using it, working with John Deere, selling okay. a Caterpillar unit with made by John Deere. and their brand on it. Exactly, and that's what this unit is here. So they actually took a John Deere into their shop mm -hmm. and started toying with coloring and decals and layout of things, right? That's exactly right. Now, where did you find this? This one, actually, I found out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Okay. Now, this one caught my eye, too, because the simplicity says demonstrator down the side of it. Mm -hmm. what, what's this all about? Well, the simplicity company wanted to promote their product. So what they did, they supplied these to dealerships for the people to take to their house and try them out. If they liked them, maybe they'd buy one of them. So they'd actually bring this to your house? Mm -hmm. You could test it on your lawn? That's correct. Wow. And... I'm assuming that this was a brighter orange. It was. It was ago, actually right? a, a gloss orange, almost like an Alice Chalmers orange. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I see it says Simplicity $110. Did you pay $110? For this? Almost. $100. <laughs> you bargained with them. Huh? That's right. <laughs> well, listen, this is a great collection. We could go on for hours. I know you've got more buildings with more stuff stashed in it. But I really appreciate you coming on and explaining the whole hobby and what's going on with the Lawn and Garden tractors. It's really a growing area of the hobby. And his publication is great. I, I would recommend that you check it out. And again, it's Lawn and Garden Collector Magazine. And you have a website? We do. It's lawnandgardencollector.com. Definitely worth checking out. On our next Tractor Fanatic webisode, we'll get an up-close look at a massive Big Bud 525.